Let's go follow us modify. Uh, in Tortoise SGN, you get a notification that it's modified by the red bone on the outside. And sometimes these icons aren't always up to date. So if you want to know if this whole project is still thing, you just hit F5 and it will refresh. We traverse the directories and refresh it. So now I know that this is it. I'm just going to show you that the commits going to fail again. So uh, Tortoise SGN installs all the utilities in the right click menu. If I try to do a commit. So here I get the same commit fails if my local copy is out of date. So here I can do a tortoise SGN, sorry, SGN update, and it's going to fix. It's going to give me a warning that it's all conflicted, and you see all these extra files. I'm not going to go into the details of all these extra files, but that's how uh, Subversion Client manages the difference between the two files. And you see that this one has a orange bone instead of a red bone. So we can come back into here and we can do edit conflict. So in edit conflicts, it's just a diff. The bottom view is what what looks like merged. Top view is what it looks like um, not merged. And so those those rules have this. Those should not have this. Those should not have this. And so basically, what I want to use is I want to use this and mine and the rest of those. So mine is the one where I added this method. So I can either use these up here, or I can right click on this and use this text file. If I scroll down to here, the code is now complete. That's exactly what I want it to do. I come up here and mark it as resolved. It's going to do a little magic behind the scenes. So anyways, uh, once this is resolved, we're going to commit it. And so this is something that we've all seen. We've all done this before. Uh, but this is why conflicts happen and, and how you avoid uh, conflict or uh, thoroughly planning out your development plan your resources that are going to be on which task and which task is developed when. And so uh, if you keep your components designed so that they're, they're disjoint, uh, then that makes it a lot easier. You don't always have that luxury, so then you have to uh, worry about who you're having uh, work on what section of the code when. And then you can always resolve conflicts if conflicts do arise. Where Subversion really kills this in .NET is uh, data sources because you have the data access layer, the table adapter. That's one big generator file. And as I stated before, generator files don't work well. So there's a couple approaches that we've tried. Uh, one approach is have one single unified data access layer uh, branch in your repository. And any change that needs to be made to that, to your data layer, has to be modified in that branch. That works well if we do all upfront design. If you're following a strict waterfall model where your detailed design is done before you start implementation, that works great. We don't always follow that. So another way we've tried is through our iterative design build version that we're doing. Uh, for each distinct component that has to access the database, uh, each one of those will have its own data access layer and so that you can develop it within the branch that you're working on. That works really well in parallel development with uh, with the design being done in iterations as you go through different phases of different milestones of the project. Where that kills you is um, if they're accessing the same data. So that goes back to your design, how you design these disjoint components so that they work well. So there's, there's, there's a lot of how do we do this that's left up to you, but the more, again, the more loosely coupled components you can, you can build, um, the easier it is, and you're always going to have to manage your data in one branch. And so, if you have multiple data section or data uh, layers for different components, uh, that makes it a lot easier. You can have to do because with Unifirst, we had one data layer for everything with how we started. And since the you know what queries they were going to run wasn't designed in the beginning, because that's not the model that we're following, um, we had to continually come back to speed. And once you once you change it in the data branch, you have to merge it back to either the trunk or the integration branch and then merge it out so all the other branches come up there. And that can be a pain. And so what we ended up doing in the end was creating different, we had a authentication data layer, we had a reports data layer, and then we had the, uh, what was it, the general, 
information is the main one, the global data that it lays. And so that's a way you, way you can organize it as well. So, all right, so this is done since I've been blabbering. And so you notice all the other files are gone, and this is now marked as read. So basically now what we have is we've told the repository that we've edited the conflicts, and I'm about to give you my A star. So this is a new version of the file, which has combinations of uh, what I had and what they had. So submit it. No, no, one star. So now we're merged, and this was within our branch. I'm going to come back over to here. This is where I had everything checked out of. Uh, you notice that this already says that I'm out of date because I've modified this file whenever I opened it by accident. Uh, but it doesn't let me know automatically that um, the email notification has been updated. I can refresh this all day long and it doesn't let me because I haven't synchronized with the repository. And so uh, here what I do is I just come over here to my right, check memory and see in this directory. I do SDN update. And we are now up to date with this new tool. Other tools you have in Tortoise are the repo browser. Repo browser will let you open up the repository. So my repository is actually located at repo, repos SDN expose. I have a subdirectory because I was going to give you several examples, but I'm only doing one now. Subdirectory called employee management. This is my employee management project uh, root, and I have my trunk and my tags and my branches. So now that we've made a change to our employee management email notification, um, I need to merge that into the trunk. So we'll go ahead and do a, a merge, and this is taking forever, so I'm going to click Merge. Now, I, I, I left that in here. Um, I didn't add, but at the end of each of the sections where I had two components for instance, you could really add into your form to do the integration. Uh, normally about a day, depending on how big the integration is. But with size projects, we do anywhere from four hours to a day to do the integration. Because once, once you do the integration, and what we're going to do right now is an integration. Merge, uh, merging something back into the trunk is an integration. But once you do your integration, you have to also have to rerun your testing. And so whatever testing tool you're using, whether it's NUnit or the Visual Studio unit testing uh, framework or uh, JUnit in Java, uh, that's really where you make sure that the merge didn't break anything. Everything's still compiled. And um, then you open up the application to see if everything's talking together. And so if you have a, a good test plan, you already have some specific integration tests that you need to perform as well on top of rerunning the 